So guys, you read the title, you know what we're going looking at? It's test ride time! <laughs> So good morning guys and thanks for joining me again at Handlebars and Holidays. It's uh, the Rocket 3 which is the subject of today's uh, little test ride. This is going to be very interesting. It's a bike I've done a lot of reading about, a lot of watching of YouTube's videos. It seems to be very well thought of and it's just a bit out there, you know, it's a bit freaky. So um, we'll be there in about 15 minutes, catch up with me then and uh, let's see how we go hmm. you see the sensors on the bike are working I have special sensors installed on all my vehicles um, that, me, that, that ensure that traffic lights always go to stop as I am approaching. Very rarely do I get through a set of traffic lights on go. So here we are, this is Triumph in Balcata, which is part of the um, Cully's dealership. There we go, and I guess that's the bike we're going to be riding there, the black one, most likely. Okay, so I'm going to have to turn the cameras off now, I don't think they'll want me walking in with cameras. Okay guys, so we've got the bike and there she is. I've literally, literally just rolled round the corner into a car park just so I can fire up the cameras. Um, now this is the uh, Rocket 3R. This isn't the GT. If I do decide I'm interested in one of these, it would be the GT that I would go for, which has um, slightly different handlebars, different foot pegs, uh, a backrest for the pillion, just a few different things, um, different wheels, um, but essentially that is um, a 2.5 litre motorcycle, 2,500 cc's, <laughs> that's a car engine in a bike. So let's, uh, let's get you clipped on and uh, let's get moving. Okay, so I don't mind saying um, throwing a leg over this machine is just a little bit on the intimidating side. It's a big bike and you, you, you know what it is. Um, it's, uh, I won't say scary, but it's um, just a touch intimidating. But to be honest, like most bikes, as soon as you move, you think, ah, it's okay. Uh, first impressions, I will give you in just a few seconds. If 
first impression is I forgot to zip my jacket up. Oh, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> Time now is 10.30, apparently we're all right for an hour, um, so this bike as I say is not the bike that I would actually be uh, looking at potentially. Um, having watched as many videos as I have uh, where they've been comparing the two bikes, this is a little bit more of a reach forward, it's not exactly got flat bars but the handlebars don't come back to you. Um, and it's got kind of normal foot pegs, slightly further than fall, a little bit more forward than normal foot pegs. Um, a slightly coarse engine, vi not vibration, coarse engine feel. Smooth, very smooth. Uh, gearbox feels very nice. But it is, this bike is a slightly more sporty kind of position. I am a little bit lent forward. It's not an unpleasant position, but they class this as a little bit more sporty, where the GT is a little bit more tourer. When I sat on the GT in the shop and uh, I'll get some, when I go back to the shop with this in a bit, I'll get some photos of the GT in, in the colour that uh, I would potentially be looking at. Um, and, uh, and see what you think of that. But when I sat on the GT, it does have a considerably more comfortable feel to it. This, I could imagine this bike, and, I, and again, although I'm saying this because I know other people have said it, but I can appreciate what they mean now, um, in that I can feel I'm slightly arching my back, or almost arching my back, uh, leaning forward. I can imagine this would make your lower back ache if you was uh, riding for any length of time. It's certainly um, not a difficult bike to ride. Apparently uh, the salesman has put me in road mode, so there's uh, a few different modes on the bike. Uh, there's certainly a rain, um, a rain, a sport, um, a road, and I think there's a fourth one, I'm not sure what that is. We've just been talking in the shop um, about a, a, an add-on that they do, a, essentially a quick shifter, which means uh, you don't require the clutch to change up and down gear. Um, I think it's a fairly inexpensive add-on. Uh, I think that would be nice. Yeah, you certainly feel like you're riding, you're on board something, you know? <laughs> I think they kind of, you know, I wonder if that was the intention with calling it a rocket, you're on board a rocket. <laughs> it's a nice tone. I don't know whether you can hear that, whether that the GoPro will pick that up, but that engine tone um, is very nice. And people have said that these aren't really loud enough, they could do with a bit more noise, and I don't, I can't, I don't. Initially, I think it's quite nice, it's a really deep rumble. It does have a, uh, you know, if, if Harley Davidson had made this bike, 
um, it, it, it sort of fits it's not got the uh, the V twin I don't know how you what you would call it certainly not got the V twin noise or the V twin um, vibes if you will it's considerably smoother although what's actually what's nice is it's not silky smooth um, as I say it does have that slightly coarse kind of feel to the uh, the whole engine which is good it makes it feel um, like a bit of a beastie it is a bit of a beastie let's face it It must be, yeah, it's hydraulic clutch. Mm. <laughs> I'm just looking down at the speed, I just noticed this bike has done 134 kilometers. It's absolutely brand new. Very, very smooth and it's a it's a surprisingly not spongy kind of ride it's a it's a <laughs> it's a little bit firmer um, it's almost got a kind of a sports bike feel to the ride The amount of engine braking that you get from a downshift is colossal. You really um, almost don't need to touch the brakes. It's actually absolutely effortless to ride this bike. It really does have a nice um, feel and kind of roll to it. Being a very similar weight to the Harley, it uh, it's actually slightly lighter, I think, than the Harley, fractionally. <coughs> It doesn't feel too peculiar. I think from a from a sort of a gently cruising along, just enjoying the uh, the day and the scenery type of bike, this is absolutely bob on. It's just really, really easy. Fourth gear. Holy crap. <laughs> That's just instant. Absolutely instant. Okay, so that's the cruise control on. That's kind of easy to... Uh, Easy to set. Cruise control is something that 
maybe on a bike would seem look at all the kangaroos there by the way I don't know whether the camera could pick those up but there's hundreds of them um, yeah cruise control might seem a bit pointless on a bike to some people but um, I've got a bit of a dodgy hand my fingers go dead when I hold the throttle so it's nice just to be able to let go <coughs> um, and I assume yeah flick the throttle the other way and off goes the cruise control same as the Harley yeah so for me cruise control is um, is an absolute must that gearbox on this bike is beautiful Absolutely effortless riding. This bike is actually quite considerably easier to ride than the Harley. Um, it just it moves. It's more nimble. It's smoother. It's um, it's like a refined Harley. Straight pieces of road are so tempting. Well, I'm half an hour out from uh, from the shop now, so unfortunately we're going to have to start thinking about turning round, which is a bit of a drag. I could uh, quite merrily stay out all day on this. So just for the uh, the people that are like the uh, technical side of uh, you know bikes and what they're all about reviews whatever you want to call it um, as mentioned before this bike is two and a half liters 2500 cc's um, and it boasts 165 brake horsepower which is not only massive but more impressively um, 221 Newton meters of torque um, which essentially means whatever gear you're in you twist this thing here and it just goes it just unbelievable the torque is uh, colossal it just makes for such an easy ride because you you're never in the wrong gear I'm in fifth gear now, doing 88 k's an hour, and just it just pulls it. Just instant power. crap that's uh, that really is sports bike you know r1 type performance i think the stats say that uh, she'll do 0 to 60 miles an hour or 0 to 100 k's in 2.7 seconds which is unreal oh just realized just blown my camera over <laughs> Yeah, you can't knock the performance of this thing at all. I'm not really a speed freak. Um, but having that amount of torque and horsepower, just, you know. Um, and because changing the bike means selling the Harley, um, I don't know if in a strange twisted sort of way I was kind of hoping not to like this 
because it does mean parting with the Harley. Um, this this bike will be worth probably similar to the Harley. Um, so it's quite likely something that doesn't actually involve spending any money, which is the nice situation. But it does mean parting with the Harley. I just realised I'm only in road mode, I'm only in normal mode, I wasn't even in sport mode then. Jesus. What must that be like? You do actually feel like you're uh, you're riding something a little bit special. Which is very much the Harley uh, scenario. Cruise control is very good. Um, this bike doesn't have the heated grips, which I think the GT does have. Um, not that we particularly need heated grips in Australia, but I believe, and I've never, I have actually, that's not true. I have actually had a bike that has heated grips, but I never even switched them on. I never, it didn't seem to be uh, relevant. <clears throat> but this fingers going dead problem, uh, which I've had since I was well, since I started riding bikes at 16. Uh, if I hold the throttle for long enough, my middle fingers, those two, go dead. Um, and somebody said on YouTube the other day that heated grips, and to keep your, the inner part of your fingers warm, stop that. Um, so it would be nice to have a bike that has them, if only to try it. If it doesn't work, you never turn them on again. But uh, fingers crossed, the, uh, if I do finish up with a GT, be nice if it had the heated grips and it'd be nice if they worked in terms of the finger thing the other thing that's a nice little bonus with this bike is it appears to have a very comfy seat we've been uh, going 45 minutes now and uh, the bum is fine I, uh, I feel I should tell you <laughs> three quarters of an hour is not very much I know that but uh, no it feels like you could go a fair a fair distance quite comfortably I think it's likely that the uh, camera on the handlebars facing me has just turned itself off I've just noticed that it's gone blank so uh, I will cut to when we're back at the shop uh, very shortly that was very very interesting um, unfortunately I have uh, I thought I'd picked up two spare batteries and I haven't I'd only picked up one so I've only got this one camera running at the moment but um, yes that was very very interesting so let's get home and we will uh, gonna have to give that some serious pondering for sure yes that was uh, was one hell of a machine hmm Certainly food for thought. I'll have to process that, I think. There is potentially one other bike that I would quite like to test ride. Um, I almost don't know whether there's any point. <laughs> anyway, we'll give that some thought. We'll get home, go and have a bit of lunch and um, see how we go. Okay, so almost home now. So thank you once again for joining me at Handlebars and Holidays. I hope that's been of interest. Uh, I've certainly got a fair bit to think about myself now. <laughs> so um, I'm going to sign off. Thanks again. Uh, apologies for just one camera, but as always, take care 
and ride safe.